What you guys got another video here for you on computer keeps turning on and turning off continuously. This is called power cycling and you can see that CPU cooler there is full of dust. And I'm going to show you how you can quickly troubleshoot a PC that is power cycling where you're getting power issues, where you power it on and it just switches straight off. I'll show you exactly what that looks like here right now. I'll power it on and you'll see it all. All the lights will come on, the fan will start spinning and it turns off. So I just want to say a big thank you to Timster at timscomputerfix.net for giving me this sample of video to show you guys. So I can show you how to troubleshoot it. I'll leave a link for his channel in the video description, but you can see it here powering on and then powering straight off. Let's go ahead and uh, troubleshoot a PC when it's power cycling. So power cycling is exactly what you see in the beginning of the video where the PC powers on and then shuts down. Sometimes you get RGB lights coming on and switching off. LED lights on the motherboard, which will go on and off, and the CPU cooler will spin up and then shut off. And this normally means it's in power cycling mode, and you can normally troubleshoot uh, this very simply and easily by following the steps in this video. So try not to skip any steps which I talk about in this video because otherwise you can end up going round in circles. Now, whether you're using a old PC or you've got a brand new build that you've just built and you're having issues with power cycling, then these tips and tricks will help you resolve your problem. So first off, let's start off with the first thing we see, which was dust build up inside the CPU cooler and also inside the case. You may have loads of dust in here. If it's an old PC, you're going to need to clean that out and blow it out with either a compressor or a blower or some sort of a compressed canned air and blow all the dust out and clean it out because heat can't dissipate through here and the CPU will get super hot and will start to shut down. Now it's pretty normal for a CPU to automatically shut down when it gets hot. So once you've cleared all of the dust out of this cooler, we want to remove uh, the actual cooler itself. And what we're gonna do is examine the actual CPU socket, make sure there's no bent pins on the CPU socket or even on the CPU itself if it's an AMD processor. And also check the CPU cooler itself to make sure it is functioning properly and working correctly. Now, once you've done all those checks, what you can do is reapply uh, some fresh thermal compound on the CPU and also reapply the, uh, the actual cooler here. Make sure it's uh, spinning at the correct revs per minute for that CPU cooler so it's cooling the CPU down the way it's meant to do. Okay, so we've removed the dust. We've checked the CPU socket and the pins on the CPU. We've reapplied thermal compound and checked and remounted this uh, the actual heatsink here. Next up, we need to make sure that if you've got any sort of overclocks on the computer, we want to reset uh, the CMOS. Make sure we reset all those because uh, having overclocks can make the system unstable and keep shutting down the PC. It might not like those overclocks. Also, XMP uh, settings for the memory here can cause issues. Some memory doesn't play well uh, with certain motherboards, and of course we want to make sure we remove any sort of XMP from there just in case that is causing the issue with uh, the PC and making it uh, do a power cycle. Now, of course, if you're getting a black screen, you want to reset the uh, CMOS by pulling out the battery and then pulling out the power cable from the computer and pushing the power button down to clear any sort of information that may be stored in there and then put the CMOS battery back in. If it's an older computer, you may want to replace the CMOS battery because the CMOS battery is failing and you can uh, rebuy a new battery. Also, there could be a jumper on the board that will allow you to clear the CMOS, which will remove any sort of information that's stored on there and that will allow you to then reboot the PC up properly and hopefully that resolves your problem. Now, another great little tip here for diagnostics is these little speakers. What they do is they will send out a bunch of beeps when you boot the PC up, maybe it'll be continuous beeps, might be one short beep and then uh, two long beeps and one short beep and, and many different types of beeps you'll get. And you can pick these up pretty cheap. If you haven't got a diagnostic LED light on the motherboard here, which sometimes shows up uh, numbers and stuff like that, this will tell you exactly what's going on with the computer. But if you haven't got one of those, you could always put one of these little speakers in down the bottom here where the, your front umbilical cords go for the case. 
you can plug them in down here and this will help you troubleshoot uh, any sort of beat codes. So what do these beat codes tell you? Well, when you get a series of beat codes, different types of beat codes, it will tell you whether it's uh, related to the hardware in your PC, whether it be motherboard or whether it be RAM issue, whether it be CPU issue or GPU issue. It normally tells you roughly where it sort of uh, points to. So it's a very useful little thing to have when you're troubleshooting. Next up, we need to check all of the cables and connections on the motherboard. You want to make sure that all the connections are fully seated. Sometimes these can work loose or you haven't pushed it all the way home and you will have intermittent power issues and it will keep shutting down and things like that. So you can see here, make sure if it's pulled out a little bit like that and the plastic is not touching each other, uh, it means it's not seated all the way in and you can run into issues. And basically, you need to make sure that they're fully seated all the way in. And you'll see the board flex in here. Be very, very careful that you don't put too much pressure on here and break one of the traces in the motherboard. Also, when it comes to the CPU one here, make sure that is fully seated as well. And you're using the right cable for that particular area. I've seen people force in the wrong type of cable in there. And of course, they've caused themselves problems. So make sure you do that and check those cables and make sure they're seated correctly. It's also important that you check the GPU cable, make sure that's fully seated and you are using the correct cable and pushed in here and you're giving the GPU plenty of power to power the actual computer. Otherwise you're gonna run into problems there. So let's talk about another common problem, power supplies. People buy insufficient power supplies or low grade or unbranded power supplies and there's not enough power to drive the GPU that they are using, especially on older systems. Some of the old ATI uh, sort of graphics cards will require a lot of power to actually run. And if the power is not good enough, it can't drive the graphics card properly and you'll get spontaneous reboots and you'll get shutting down when it starts up because it hasn't got enough power to actually drive the GPU there. So you wanna make sure that the power supply is working correctly and giving you enough power to drive the card that you're asking it to drive. So it's pretty simple as that really. So check the manufacturer's website for specifications for your card to make sure you've got enough power to drive the graphics card there. So the next thing you wanna do is check your power supply to make sure the power supply is not bad or DOA on arrival, or you're having intermittent issues with your power supply. The way you test that, is by swapping out the power supply with a known good power supply. Unfortunately, some people don't have power supplies to hand to use to check their power supply that they've got in the system. You can use uh, the power supply testers, but to be honest, they're not that great. Uh, the probably one of the better ones is Thermal Takes Power Supply Tester. It's also important to check the power supply cable to make sure the power supply cable is not faulty and uh, you can just replace this or change it. They're pretty cheap and just swap it out and make sure that it's working okay. We call these kettle leads in the UK. So check one of those and make sure you're not using any sort of extension uh, lead where you're plugging it into that because that can cause issues as well, especially if the extension lead is starting to fail. So make sure you're not using one of those and you're plugging it in to directly into the wall out there, okay? So now you've checked your power supply and your cable and uh, that may have been your problem. You can swap that out and uh, move on. If it's still causing you problems, you need to move on to the next diagnosis part, which is your GPU. Now the GPU can have an issue. You can swap this out with another GPU and quickly test, or you can use a built-in uh, GPU on the CPU if it has one. So Intel do have those built in. This one does have the 3400G does have a a GPU in there which you can use or APU and you can plug it in at the back here and remove the GPU from here and see whether you get display. You might have to clear the CMOS just to make sure that that's working okay. If it is, then you get display, you know your GPU is bad and you can just replace the GPU. So it's important that you check it and uh, don't skip that part, otherwise you're gonna run it into issues. Now, another thing I do, which is very simple and easy to do is buy yourself a cheap GPU on Amazon, one of those cheap ones, you know, 20, 30 quid, and literally have no power draw on them. Take that out and put in the cheaper GPU here and see whether you get any sort of display. If you do, you know it's a GPU-related issue. 
and basically you can move on to the next one and it doesn't cost a lot of money uh, to buy a cheap GPU. Something like the GT710 would only cost you £30 to buy and you can use that to troubleshoot and diagnose your system. Another thing to test is your fans. If you've got RGB fans, they may be causing an issue and they may be causing a power issue. So you make sure you disconnect any of these to make sure they're not causing any of the problems that you're having with your system. Very unlikely, but you never know uh, with PCs, anything can happen. So always disconnect those and get back to basics. You don't really need to have all these fans in to test the system. So make sure you remove those from the equation and then you can always say that it's not a fan issue. Also, with the RAM, you want to make sure that you remove any sort of RAM module. So we'll move on to removing one stick of RAM and uh, leave one stick in there. And if you've got four sticks, obviously move three and leave one in. And of course, XMP can cause issues with RAM if they're not playing well with a motherboard that can cause a problem. Having one stick in there and try each slot on the board. So if you've got four slots, you want to try each one of those slots with that stick of RAM. And again, once you've checked all those and it's still not working, swap the RAM stick over and try the other stick until you find the bad stick if there is a bad stick of RAM. If you've got another spare stick of RAM lying around which is brand new and works well and you know it works, then you can always swap it out with this. It's uh, called hot swapping and you swap that out and check to see whether that resolves the problem. If it fires up and boots, you know you've got a problem with your RAM and uh, basically you can RMA it or you can just buy new memory, whatever you need to do. Now it's not unknown that the uh, brand new RAM that you may have bought may be dead on arrival or it could be problematic or it might not play well with that motherboard. So make sure you buy the right type of compatible uh, RAM with that motherboard so it works properly. If it's brand new, it may be just dead on arrival. It may be a bad stick or even a bad two sticks. Could have been a bad batch. Uh, anything can be going wrong with a PC, so never assume that it's not that. Always check. And if it's used RAM, it could be uh, bad RAM when you bought it on eBay or something like that. And of course, you have got no way of testing that apart from using Passmark Mem Test or anything like that. So I try to steer clear of used stuff. But generally, you need to test the memory. And normally, putting in a brand new stick of known good memory inside here will quickly verify whether it was a memory issue or not. Also, check. The actual uh, slot, make sure there's no bad uh, debris in the slot. Make sure you check the connector here. Make sure it's nice and clean. You can use a rubber to clean this if it's old memory uh, because uh, residue builds up on here over time. You can use isopropanol as well to clean this. You can blow out the little slot with uh, a, a duster or blower or something like that. Also, the slot on the board could be bad. So just bear that in mind as well. That's why you want to try all the slots on the board itself before you know whether it's a RAM issue. And sometimes just reseating the RAM will resolve the problem because you may have moved the computer or knocked it and it may have just jarred loose. It might not have been pushed all the way in and that can cause issues as well. I've seen a RAM stick that's just sticking out slightly that's caused problems with the machine. Now we're getting down to the nitty gritty now where it gets down to the motherboard failure or the CPU is gone. Uh, you have got the hard drive, which you also need to quickly diagnose as well. But that is normally not the problem with this type of issue. But you can quickly test that if you need to. Uh, but generally, uh, it is the motherboard and CPU now that you need to start thinking about. And uh, how would you go about testing the CPU? Well, if it's an old system uh, and you've got an old system that uh, you haven't got a spare CPU or you haven't got a motherboard to check, then obviously and you're not getting no display, then it's going to be one of those two. And, and most of the time, it's related to the motherboard. CPU very rarely fails. I have seen the CPU fail before uh, a few times, but it's very rare, and it normally comes down to the motherboard failure. And the CPU is generally not the cause of it. But that's not to say that it isn't your CPU, and this is always the risk. But if it's an old system, you'd be probably looking at replacing the whole computer by now. And if it's a brand new system, you would probably RMA both of those parts just to make sure uh, which, which one it is that has gone bad because you wouldn't be able to know. So you'd be able to replace those two and send them back. Now, again, if you've built a brand new computer and you're still having issues and the motherboard may be sitting up against the case and that could be causing problems because it's grounded out or you could have a standoff in there that's touching the back of the uh, motherboard. Uh, which could cause an issue and ground the system out and cause a short, make it shut down. 
that can be an issue and you need to check that any loose screws in here you need to check as well anyway i think that's going to be about it for this video i hope this has been helpful to you uh, people that ask this question all the time it's pretty straightforward just go through the motions and check every component in there. there's not that many components to a computer so it's not going to take that long don't overcomplicate it and you can use this method to fix a lot of problems with hardware anyway i just want to say a big thank you to all my youtube members i really do appreciate it who have joined my youtube members group your names are going up on the screen right now my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk thanks again for your continued support bye for now